What an incredible night to celebrate amateur and youth baseball. Hi there, folks. My name is Darren Sutton, and it's time for the championship game of the 10 new edition of the National All-State Select Championship. 20 different regions and states represented from around the country. A who's who of talented, committed young athletes. And again, two weekends at an incredible complex, the Diamonds at Daly Park. We're about, if you're crow flying 45 miles from Minute Maid Park, the home of the Houston Astros and southwest of Houston, Texas. What a great matchup we have. The Tennessee squad has survived to push on through. They had a wild game to get here against Georgia. The team out of Southern California fights through here at the 10 U age group. We're excited to introduce all of them to you. And these events are certainly being played for two consecutive weekends. This weekend, the 10s, the 12s, and the 14 U's crowning champions. 71 teams vying for the title, total at different age divisions. And as we said, 20 at this age group. And a mark which looks at the odds next weekend, 9, 11, and 13 U, 63 total teams next weekend. Excited to have Danny Wexelman on the call for those two championships. We'll have the 9 and the 11 U. So hang with us, by the way. After we crown a 10 U champion, we will crown a 12 U champion and bring you all of the action. This event has such a, a rich history. It was born in 2021, but it's been such a huge uptick in per participation because when you think about the early stages, we saw 12 different states represented. Now, at the 12U and 14U groups, it's gone from 12 to 25. 12 to 25, and it, it's become such an incredibly represented area. And it's fun because when you look at Southern California, there's even some Northern California athletes that have snuck onto the roster. We'll introduce them because they're important to this team. And when you think about this Tennessee roster from Huntington and Nashville, Murfreesboro, Spring Hill, Signal Mountain, Tennessee. And let's take a peek at the starting lineups for these squads as they get ready to swing it first. First off for Tennessee, Jackson Sprays at the top of the order. He, uh, he obviously was a talented athlete. We've, we've known that name for quite some time. It's Weston Duke. It's Duncan Mount. It's Knox White. James Brandt, Brady Lawrence, Kellen Steele. William Goodrich, Ryan McCallum, Bennett Gibson, and Chase Conrad. We'll bat 11 in this one, too, all the way down to the end. We'll see 11 hit in this starting lineup, and it's a chance to see a whole bunch of talented 20 32s, 20 31s, and just a few 20 33s. What makes this event fun is the camaraderie, the friendship, getting to know one another, players that you play against as the California team goes to work defensively. Southern California with an outfield of Blaine Watson, Hudson Bowman, and Jamison White. He is in right field from left to right with an infield from third to first of Cameron Banks, of Brandon Garcia, of Blake Thornton, and Adam Baca. And then a chance to see on the mound for this California team, talented right-handed pitcher, Sebastian Perez. How'd they get here? And again, the last game was a real big challenge. That Georgia-Tennessee went back and forth. Georgia had grabbed the lead. Tennessee pushed back. They went back and forth the entire time. You see the work that SoCal has done. And again, every one of these teams guaranteed pool play games. So the pool play, really, really important when you're trying to determine your spot. 20 states and regions. Again, Alabama, Arizona, California. I'll list them all because they deserve it. Carolina, Chesapeake, Florida, Georgia, the Great Lakes, Hawaii, Louisiana, Mid-Atlantic, the Midwest, Mississippi, Nevada, New England, Northeast, Pacific Northwest, Puerto Rico, Tennessee, and Texas. Those are the squads that were represented. Sebastian Perez is in the middle of all the action. Perez in the, in the, in the bump goes to work in the circle number 50 on that jersey. And when you, when you get to know Sebastian Perez, understand this. He's from Bassett, California. Right-handed hitter, and again, at this age, 10 u group, we see players that are position players, they'll play all over. He's a third baseman, he's a shortstop, he's a right-handed pitcher. He deals with Jackson Spray to start things. Again, Diamonds at Daly Park, 94 acres. Fort Bend County, Texas. The sun is gone now, it's beautiful under the lights, nighttime, but shaded stadium seating, all turf. 
Let's do this thing. Jackson Spray leads things off. Excited to introduce these athletes one by one to all of you. Right-handed bat and the first pitch misses away. 1-0 the count. On behalf of our entire production team, certainly glad you're hanging out with us for this, the championship. And then with a little curl and tuck as he hides the baseball just a bit. Spray in this event has been great. As a matter of fact, you'll see a 667 batting average. He has got a ton of hits. It's been incredible at the top of the order, hitting 558. That 667 is actual on base percentage. But Spray has been amazing in this event. Ten hits, 17 at bats, a 1667 OPS as Perez dots the inside corner with the strike. Sebastian Perez just turned 10 years old, a youngster out there on the bump. This is his 14th perfect game event. Popped up right side. Toward the corner, heads Jamison White. Nothing to do there, unable to make the play. Uh, this is a shining star, this complex, isn't it? Sebastian, Adeline is his mom, Julio is his dad. He's earned an NB pitcher and an NB player along the way. He celebrated his birthday on September 25th. Swing and a miss, just got a piece of that one. In and out of the catcher's mitt. Rosenberg, a, a great city, a great town. These folks outside of Houston have been able to enjoy some authentic food, certainly some good old-fashioned Texas hosting. And that misses outside, and Spray continues what has been an incredible event. He is on with a walk. Weston Duke now, five hits in 17 at bats. 294 average with a 316 on base. And an OPS of 963 in this event, Weston Duke. This team from Tennessee playing in their eighth game. What a wonderful experience. As we get settled behind the plate. We'll get a chance to introduce our umpires. It's a perfect time. Steve Walker, as you can see him there, the home plate umpire. Chris Humphreys is the first base umpire. Scott Kosian is the second base umpire. Bobby Cepeda is the third base umpire. Those are our men in blue in this uh, 10U championship. We're making sure we have all the tech set in this one. A seven pitch walk to start things. They used to call uh, Rosenberg, Texas, Mud Town because the Brazos River nearby would flood and the dirt roads when this city was born. A, a lot of mud, understandably so. When you think about the history of this city, a suburb of Houston, Texas, one MLB player, one PG alum, Tony Harper heads up the entire youth space for perfect game. But Randall Gritchick is from this city. He is from Rosenberg, Texas, the angel in the Rocky this year. Went to Lamar Consolidated High School, 10 years in the big leagues. Weston Duke, hope he has 10 years in the big leagues. The right-handed stick. Chases high and away. The throw down, it's a stolen base. Aggressive for Jackson Spray. Runner into scoring position for the team from Tennessee. Got a nice jump. Middle of the batter's box as he wags that bat parallel to the ground over his shoulder. High pop up. Center field pretty well struck. It bounces in there. Between the two outfielders, Bowman and Watson all the way around to score. Two bases and an RBI and a big one for Tennessee. It's Weston Duke. Contact, rewarded for it. 
Gosh, we saw so much with the big boys, didn't we, playing in the postseason? Rewarded for contact, and it looked like Watson and Bowman, they may even tell you one of us could have caught that baseball. But in the end, it had eyes, ended up in a perfect spot. Duncan Mount is a left-handed bat. Duncan chases up and away. Duncan, a 476 batting average, 7 of 18 in this event. An 11.43 OPS. Duncan takes a step out. Mount from Kingston, Tennessee. Run it up. Down gets that one. Lewis, that one foul at the first baseline. This event, as we said, certainly cutting edge, new. But such a swift pickup and participation. So great at these age groups, too, for these athletes. Good looking stance. Just slightly open. As that one sails way outside. Armando Maciel Jr. is his battery mate working with Sebastian Perez. That's a good peek at Weston Duke out there at second. Mount not even 10 years old yet. Nine years and 11 months old. Played in just under a half dozen PG events. As he serves that one the other way toward the hole and into left field. That's a base hit. Aggressive on the base pads. All the way in with the slide into second goes Mount. Three consecutive base runners to start things. And just like that, it is two to nothing, Tennessee on top. And that, for a nine-year-old young man, was a beautiful, beautiful piece of opposite field hitting. Single, he advances on the throw, but Mount with a single and an RBI. Look at him, let that ball travel and just serve it in the left field. What a pretty swing from Mount. 50 games played this year at PG events for Mount. He's got 12 home runs. And on base of 6.07. 61 travel ball hits this year for Duncan Mount. And now it's a chance for Knox White. Knox White from Huntington, Tennessee. A five foot one inch and 90 pounds of Knox White as he digs in. Perez skips that one in there. Nice job by Maceo working behind the plate. You know, this is how you start things, certainly sending a message. This has been a scrappy team. Again, there's been ups and downs as they've fought their way through. Southern California team is five and one. As that one is fouled back. The Tennessee team, 3-2-1. They lost to North Texas. They beat East Coast. With the draw, they battled South Florida. They lost to this team, Southern California, in pool play. And they beat Northeast. They beat South Florida. And they turned the tables on Georgia in a back-and-forth affair. That's been what has gone on to this point. The game doing such a great job this week in hosting these athletes, their families. So many local coaches, travel coaches fly in to help pool their skills together to join in and coach these teams. Over the top of that one. Two balls and two strikes to count on Knox White. Slightly closed stance, just a bit as you can see. Perez, tired of waiting, swings out and gets off the mound. Velocity-wise for Perez, he's gotten it up to 57 miles an hour through his journeys later this summer. He's thrown 64 as that one is slipping right on through as that one's fouled back to the backstop. Perez in his perfect game time, 21 and a third innings pitched. 31 strikeouts so he's missed a ton of bats and by the way when you put a bat in his hand he's played in 52 games and has a 580 on base really talented all-around player 
He's looking for a big out now, though, as that one skips by. That will advance the runner as it gets by the catcher. Mount moves over to third base. And now an RBI chance for Knox White. Knox, 10 and a half years old. Swing check 9U, one of his recent travel teams for which he has played. Knox has pitched a little bit, but in his time at PG Events in 27 games, has a 403 on base. That one kicks by. Well, that played another run. Can't be found, and it does. That one hit the front of the home plate. You could see it. They see a looked and looked, just couldn't find it. Don't know that would have made a difference if he found it right away, because look at the high bounce. And then once that one comes down, great read, by the way, by Mount. He was gone. So another visit and another conversation. Trying to grind his way through. Marcos Casillas is the head coach for the MVP Hustle. He's on this 10U staff. Thomas Baca is the assistant coach of the MVP Hustle. He's on this staff. P.J. Garcia runs the MVP Hustle in Northern California. Looks like we've got a pitching change. So Cal switching things up on the mound. Cameron Banks, and we'll reset who's playing where for a quick break. Looks like Banks going to get a new glove, see if he can quiet things down on the bump. Glad to have you with us at the 10U National All-State Select Championship game. Cameron Banks grabs the baseball, hops from third base, and has a chance to go to work. His coaching staff makes it clear, good arm action on the mound, can spot up very well as a hitter. He has power. Those are the words from coaches Casillas, Baca, and Garcia. Sebastian, who was working on the mound, Sebastian Perez moves over to third base, so an opportunity to shift things up. As Knox White moved on with the walk, James Brandt will get a chance. And in an all-star setting such as this, and in a battle such as this, understand that there is really no sensitivity for these pitchers. If they feel like it's not there for them and a move is made, they, you know, they'll swing it, they'll still hit it. This is an, an all-American caliber or all-star tournament. And here's James Brandt now. We will see James pitch, and he's going to pitch with a lead. Boom, on the move, good base running and aggression. As a stolen base for Knox White. That's the second stolen base this inning by this squad. Got a really good jump. Pretty throw, right there waiting, and a nice tag popped down. Garcia, but Knox White with the stolen base. The hits have been a plenty. A walk to start things, then a double, a single, then another walk. Right down the middle for a strike. Says home plate umpire Steve Walkers. This gorgeous old turf complex, loaded with action, filling up 94 acres. 3 to nothing the score, Tennessee on top. Boy, he was on that one, pretty swing. Knox White out there with a stolen base, 10 stolen bases, and now 28 perfect game events. That one runs high and inside. Knox's dad, Kennedy, as he stands out there at second base. Played baseball, played in college, played at Bethel University in Middle Tennessee State. Mom played some hoops at Tennessee Martin. Come on, come on, come on. That one gets by, unable to be played on a backhand, so the runner moves to third. So White, really good genes athletically. Goes ahead and grabs that extra bag. Armando's having to work behind that plate, isn't he? RBI chance for James Brandt. Springs out of the way. Brandt takes ball four. The young man just about two months past his 10th birthday makes his home in Nashville, Tennessee. We see Brandt reach there, getting on base a bunch in this tournament. And Brandt gets on base in his 55th PG game played at a clip of 535. That's his career on base. The runners are on first and third here in the first inning. Right-handed hitter Brady Lawrence. Hey, 
Brady, a couple of hits in this event. And on the move, throw down, tag pop down, held on to it. It looked like the runner stayed put at third. Thought they might try and steal a run that time. Pretty exchange and a nice job by Brandon Garcia. Armando's had to work a lot behind the play, but look at that. He goes, gets it out front of the bag, plays the ball, doesn't let it play him. Looked like he might have got spiked a little bit. Those plastic molded cleats. That's nice. That's good to see. That'll give a little bit of encouragement defensively for the Southern California team. Who, by the way, help me weigh in. Both uniforms are great, but I love those California uniforms. Those are sharp. Fun colors. We're going to miss. Good cut to that one. Just natural movement away. Young Brady Lawrence. Flags that bat behind his helmet, awaiting his big chance. That one's outside and off the plate. Banks has tiptoed up to 61 miles an hour out there working on the mound. Right down the middle. Fell back to the screen. The runner at third is Knox White. I think the best part about that caught stealing as far as confidence goes, it's an out. Start doubting yourself. Are we going to get an out at all? As well as they've played. Good pitch just off the plate outside. Again, a couple of pitches back to back, 60, 61 miles an hour. Brady Lawrence is from Louisville, Kentucky. Born in this Tennessee roster. Just his fourth PG event. Good to have him playing in this event. What an opportunity for, for Brady Lawrence. Rob Lawrence is his dad who went to William Penn College. His mom is Nikki. Played softball. Got to back out of the way that time. Lawrence has played for the J-Town strike. Joe Glasscock, his travel ball coach. No 10 on June 11th. He's got to back out of there. And he will take his base. So runners on first and third. And this is Kellen Steele. Steele. Tennessee man, Chattanooga Christian. 5'1 and 95 pounds, Kellen Steele. The last one, by the way, just got the inside corner on that extended call from Lawrence. I think I mislabeled it as a, a ball, but enough for the inside corner to get the call from Walker. So two outs in the inning. Good run. We talked about the cut to that right arm. How about the run for Banks to get that extended corner call? Three in a row of missed, though, behind getting that good call. And... You with that runner at 30, love nothing more than to give them just one more run. Steal four hits in eight at bats. A couple of walks as well. That means he's got a 636 on base in this event. Fights that one off. Right center field. Play is made out there by Hudson Bowman. So the strikeout, a big one, as well as the caught stealing. A defensive gem by Bowman to put that one away. But three runs on the board. Tennessee, this, the 10U National All-State Select Championship game, jumps out on top of SoCal. Steele, who's done such a great job behind the plate. I think he's earned the right to lead off and swing the bat. Why not? He had to grind as a catcher right behind him. Blake Thornton is the second baseman. Hudson Bowman. The center fielder, it's Sebastian Perez, Cameron Banks. We saw him move over from third base to pitch. Brandon Garcia is the shortstop. Jamison Wilhite has had a huge tournament. We'll intro him in just a bit. It's Blaine Watson, Adam Baca, Alejandro Arcos, 
Zach Casillas top to bottom. And we saw James Brandt, who works on the mound with a bat in his hand. Brandt, who on July 21st turned 10 years old, goes to work. George is his dad. And his aunt's a talented softball player, Danielle Pieroni. And he has been a, a special player athletically. Not only at PG events, but as a football player, as a basketball player, one of those athletes that we, we love watching. Armando Maceo leads things off. An athlete, a really good baseball IQ, especially for a 10U player. There are a lot of barrels in that bat when he swings it. We've seen him catch. And despite being someone who works behind the plate, some of the best speed on this team. That's why he works at the top of the order. 1-0 the count as he takes high. That wags over his head. That looked good to him. That was shoulder high as he swings right through it. Three to nothing. Tennessee strikes. Timely hits. Aggressively swinging it. Leg kick from Armando as he takes high and inside. Two balls and one strike to count. Nine and a third innings, that's all for Brant at PG events, but 12 strikeouts during his time. It's a swing up there. Why come down if he'll show interest in it? A little frustrated as he steps out the box, takes a look down that third baseline. One is high. You see seven hits and 18 at bats in this tournament. 389 batting average. 421 on base. There's a free pass added in there to what he has done in this event. From Corona, California. That's in the Inland Empire, not far from Riverside if you've ever been to Southern California. That one in and out of the catcher's mitt. His dad, Armando, played both baseball and softball. His mom, Sonia, loves to play soccer. His mom, by the way, is a black belt. Karate. Karate black belt. They're going to miss good fastball. Stayed stubborn and down goes Maceo. And that's a good way to start things for Brandt. Zip over the outside corner and 60 miles an hour, well located, perfect. Blake Thornton, his chance now, the second baseman for this squad as Blake takes high. Really good wheels. If he gets on, he runs a lot. He takes a strike to even things up, but one and one. We're in Rosenberg, Texas. 45 minutes from Minute Maid Park with no traffic. Pretty pitch just outside off the plate that time. And Texas certainly was represented here. Team from Texas. Team from Puerto Rico. And the swing fights that one off that time. Lake is really having an event. Eight of 17, a 550 overall on base, 471 batting average. An OPS of 1197 in his first seven games in which he has played. Lake from Santa Ana, California. That's not too far from Disneyland if you've ever visited Orange County. Where the Angels play as he chases that one up and out of the zone. So back-to-back -back strikeouts again. Brandt being rewarded for throwing strikes. And then elevating. It looks good. 
And that's tough when you get down to in this all-star caliber tournament. Three nothing, you, you probably instantly press. Plus you've been playing most of the day, you're tired. Pretty pitch just outside and off the plate. This is Hudson Bowman. Bowman the center fielder. Hudson hitting 500, eight of 16 in this event. Mr. Base hits have been there certainly. He's got an OPS of 1329. Hudson with a 579 on base at this event. Good pitch, rides in on the hands. Staying ahead. A two strike count, struck out Maceo, struck out Thornton. Right hander James Brandt. Bowman slashes that one well struck toward right field, drifting back just off the glove and will roll all the way to the wall. Bowman takes an aggressive turn, he's heading toward third. Standing up, great decision. And his coaches will say it clearly, he goes foul line to foul line, and if that swing didn't back it up, I don't know what does. Foot down, beautiful swing, pitch up in the zone, did not try to pull that baseball, couldn't have. Not at helmet high, and I think for Bennett Gibson, to be fair, I'm gonna guess that ball carried a lot further than he thought if you're the right fielder. So a good old fashioned clean triple, with two outs though for Hudson Bowman. It's fouled off by Sebastian Perez. Perez started things on the mound. Bowman out of Poway, California. It's for those San Diego Hawks elite, just turned 10 years old. With three bags in front of Sebastian. And it skips by, bounces right back to the catcher. Slides in, pops the tag down, in time for the out. Oh, Brady Lawrence played it beautifully. He got a really nice ricochet, but you still have to execute. Watch Lawrence slow the game down here. Gets by him. Didn't get far enough away. Didn't even have to get that ricochet. He kept it with him. And a good heads up play to end things. Three to nothing the score through one at the 10U National All State Select Championship. The 14U age group has 74 college commitments already in its rich history. Select festival athletes over these two weekends, they're all over the place. 102 combined. 31 of them here this weekend at the 12 U age group. And there's the first pitch. Misses up and away. An opportunity for William Goodrich now to hit. Cameron Banks back out there on the mound. William from Hickson, Tennessee. Nice job by Armando to go up and get that one and just turned 10 years old did Mr. Goodrich. We've seen him play a lot at PG events. 65 PG overall games of 520 on base. Ready pitch, that one's gotta be inside corner. Goodrich watches that one up and away. He's the son of Justin and Laura Goodrich. Plays football, plays basketball as well. Chattanooga Premier with dad as his coach. One of his travel teams. That one's low and inside. Mr. Goodrich, you were on. Part of that journey for William has been speed, certainly. As a matter of fact, in those 65 games played at PG events, he's got 70 stolen bases. So keep an eye on Goodrich, a threat to run for sure. They're thinking about it, he's running anyway. The throw down, he stole it. Pitch was up and out. See it come home here, a pitch out. And stolen base, 71 now at PG events. How about you? Ryan McCallum will hop on the mound and pitch from the left side. He squares the bunt, takes that one down and away from Cameron Banks. Hey, anticipate it yet. Let's go. 
Las Casas, Tennessee. Blueprint Baseball, his travel team. Three months past his 10th birthday. Good comeback run on that one to get a called strike. From Steve Walker's behind the plate. Matthew and Brittany, the parents of Ryan. Come on, come on. That one skips by. Time to move that runner to third. That's exactly where Goodrich will go on a wild pitch. Both of Ryan's parents went to school in Tennessee. Dad at Middle Tennessee State. Mom was a cheerleader at Lipscomb. Takes high. Back-to-back -back walks. Banks looking to find that strike zone. Runners on first and third. And a visit. Conversation. Bennett Gibson due up. Talking through this situation. Let's see if this remains his game in which he'll be able to work. Talked about coaches Casilla, Spaca, and Garcia. What a great job they've done, all contributing to travel and youth baseball in California with the MVP Hustle organization in Southern and Northern California. Bennett Gibson's the right fielder for Freesboro, Tennessee. Just past his ninth birthday, just under nine and a half years old. How fun is this for the young man? Runner swiped a bag, a stolen base, and a good jump there from McCallum. Two stolen bases in the inning, two walks as well. Danny and Lisa, his parents. Letter high called a strike. Providence Christian Academy is where he does his work in the classroom. Right back over the outside corner. That was a great shot at Goodrich a moment ago. Sizing up his lead down the third base line. What a beautiful facility this is. First time here. Won't be the last. That one's over the outside corner. That strike three. Talk about coming up big when you need it most. Nice bounce back from Cameron Banks. Quiet Maceo is behind the plate showing that pitch. Just quiet as can be. Beautiful job catcher. Arnas on second and third. One away. Chase Conrad takes just a little bit low. High, it's called a strike. Didn't mean to, and he fouls it off. Big chance for Chase. This is the fifth game in this event in which he has played, looking for his first hit. A good chance for him playing first base, pick up that big hit, gain a little bit more confidence. Over the outside corner, beautiful pitch, back-to-back -back strikeouts. Back-to-back -back strikeouts looking. I'm sorry, but watching Maceo catch, what a joy. Just born to catch. And again, he had to deal with so much. Looks like they will put on Jackson Spray with an intentional walk. He has had such a hot tournament. They'll take their chances with Weston Duke. Now Duke, he doubled in the left center field back in the first inning. Weston will take this chance, and he takes strike one. Out of Gallatin, Tennessee. 
Over the outside corner, 0-2 the count. Banks feeling it just a little bit. He gets out of this mess, gets back in the dugout. You know the California team will gain a little bit of swagger. Oh, what a backhanded grab by Maceo. That saved a run. We'll never hear about it tomorrow, but that saved a run. A fine play that time. One ball and two strikes to count on Weston Duke. Great contact. That one driven toward right center field, toward the wall. And the play is made out there by Bowman. Over the shoulder grab with the bases full. My goodness. Banks, you bet. Slap a five. I would too. He dug himself in a hole and got out of it. Let's see if California grabs some momentum. To the bottom half of inning two we go. Tennessee three, Southern California nothing at the 10U National All-State Select Championship game. Aaron Sutton, glad to have you spending time with us. What a gorgeous facility this is in Houston, Texas. Presenting with Launch Hydrate on those jerseys. These athletes enjoying hydration via Launch Hydrate throughout this event. Good looking jerseys, aren't they? Really sharp to be a part of this event. And here we go. Perez was hitting a moment ago when there was a caught stealing. But it's Sebastian from Bassett, California. It's Cameron Banks out of Clovis who got out of that mess. It's Brandon Garcia right behind him. Garcia well decorated. We'll tell you about that for this team, this talented team. And it was impressive, quite frankly, to watch James Grant pitch. A lot of power for Perez. Finds the barrel a ton. Loads up that back leg. There's a leg kick. Late choice there as he chases that one. Seven of 14 in this event. He's got a home run. He's got a 14.68 OPS in this tournament. Oh, what a swing. You kidding me? Back leg hacking. Yeah, there is power. You can see it in that swing from Sebastian. You take a peek at the time in which he has played at PG events. 52 overall games. He's homered three times. 580 on base. Oh, nearly got him. Yeah, he didn't go around there. Definitely checked his swing. They'll take a peek anyway. Chris Humphreys, the first base umpire out there. Hey, by the way, don't forget, we'll have the 12U title game. About a half hour after this one comes to an end, give or take. So hang out with us on Perfect Game TV. A tie, that's ball four. Comes the California team, or so they hope. And Cameron Banks, I'm guessing, brimming with a little bit of confidence after getting out of that bases loaded mess a moment ago. Now it's a chance to help himself. Clovis, California native, takes up and away. Six overall games this year at PG events and on base of 536 with five home runs. That one skips by. Runner moves up. Perez into scoring position. How does a player make this event? A roster, rep their region, leading up to the grand finale. Perfect game staff and directors around the country host regional all-state events. They see players go head-to-head. -head. There's a put-together big-time performances across big tournaments as well in the spring and summer. That's duly noted. If you're not following already, hit up PG Youth, that account. Hit up Perfect Games overall, Twitter and social media. The social team of Perfect Game is unmatched. They're going to miss. Letter high. Fastball chases. We're just a tiny bit of icing on the cake broadcasting the live championship game. The social team has been walking us through this event. 
the entire time. Felt like I've been right here with them. Three to nothing to score. Tennessee scored all three of their runs in the first as we play here in the bottom half of the second inning. Six inning game. Good swing right back to the screen. Fouled off right side is dad, Cornell Banks, Cameron's dad. Played professionally at the highest level in the NFL. Played at Fresno State, then a professional. Both parents, Jane and Cornell, went to Fresno State. Mom, by the way, third degree black belt, martial arts black belt. One's outside. Great jeans. Banks will take a walk. Now writing his own story. the Ortiz Baseball Factory, USA Prime as well. Brandon Garcia's turn from Pittsburgh, California. Four years, four months past his 10th birthday as he drops that bunt down. Is there a play anywhere? There is not a gorgeous backspin drop between the mound and the third base line. This talented athlete who has played at more than two dozen PG events. Brandon Garcia with a gorgeous bunt. That PJ played deep two baseball at Upper Iowa. Mom is Jan. He plays football too. He is related. You remember every day Eddie Guardado, the great reliever? Do you guys remember him? Twins? That's a, that's a direct relative of Mr. Brandon Garcia. And there's Jamison Wilhite. He is out of Livermore, California. Bases a full, by the way. Will Height with a big bat. Had a home run in the semifinal game. Takes a strike over the inside corner. What do his coaches say about Will Height? Big power, opportunity to shrink the ballpark as he swings through that one. Bases full for Jamison Wilhite. Just off the plate outside. That one is low. That one is high to Will Height. Three and oh, the count. Amison, three months past his 10th birthday. Big chance now. He takes a strike that dots the outside corner. Beautiful pitch, sends him back to the dugout. That is a huge first out. the count. He showed such great stuff to Brandt. Swing and a miss. 0 oh and 2 the count. A pause. A conversation. 
See, squatting down at first is Brandon Garcia. A fist bump, see if he can pull his way through it, James Brandt. The left fielder, Blaine Watson. Blaine from Carson, California. was called. Frustrated as he improperly stepped off the mound, buckled, and that plate's a run. Huge hack. You know Brandt's frustrated too with himself because he's shown he's got the stuff to dig right out of this mess. He, remember, struck out a pair to start this thing. He made a, a nice combo play after the triple by Bowman to erase him on a ball that skipped just by his catcher, Brady Lawrence, who popped the tag down. To the right side, charging in. Plays made, tagging, throwing to the plate. He'll hold up. Big out. Nice job, Duncan Mount out there in center field. Except ball clean even larger just to get a run. Well struck, by the way, too. Pretty swing. Adam Baca, he takes low. Adam from the Alto, California. Right now a tougher strike zone before he grows and sprouts 4-7. Wings right through that one, coming up empty. Two balls and one strike to count. Outside. One of ten in this event, but a couple of walks as well. Up that on base percentage, looking for his second hit. Oh, would it feel nice. Think about a hit right now with two outs runners on second and third. Baca just looking for really good contact somewhere. He's a good left-handed pitcher, too. Played in more than two dozen perfect game events in his time, has Adam. That one's high and inside. He'll take a walk. Son of Tommy and Cynthia, Adam Baca, loads up the bases. Alejandro Argos now. Argos from Baldwin Park, California. Back up against the plate there. You see those hands away from his body. Fouled that one off. Bases full, two outs. Three for nine in this event. A pair of walks has that on base percentage at 500 in the tournament. As he takes high, one and one to count. Serving as the extra hitter, Alejandro Arcos. James Brandt, the right-hander. Throws that one high and inside to his catcher, Brady Lawrence. Yeah. 
And it's a swing and a miss. Good life, that one diving down. Six times Brandt has played in a PG event and has come away an all-tournament team member. Six times. Been a part of five different championship teams. Swing and a miss, a pump of the fist. A huge strikeout. A balk does play to run. But he gets out of a big jam. That is five strikeouts thus far for this right-handed pitcher through just two innings of work. And two is what we have played as we move to the third inning with Tennessee leading Southern California, the championship game of the 10U National All-State Select Championship. Good to have you with us here at this beautiful facility, Diamonds at Daly Park. Nearly 100 acres of baseball bliss in Fort Bend County, just southwest of Houston, Texas. Duncan Mountain will lead things off. This is the 10U championship of the All-State Select. I'm from Kingston, Tennessee, as we told you earlier. Not yet 10 years old. That one sails outside. Hold on a second now. Let me double check. His 10th birthday was yesterday. He is 10 years old. Happy belated birthday to Duncan. Had a single and an RBI and a run scored. He lashes that one foul to the left side. And if memory serves on the pretty swing, it was a pitch down and away. And he sent it the other way. A gorgeous professional-like approach for the birthday boy. Jonathan and Laura, his parents. Mom played college basketball at UT Chattanooga. Dad, a professional golfer, Jonathan Mount. Went to Tennessee. Also plays football, plays basketball. Five-star prep red, one of his travel teams, along with Tennessee Nationals. That's outside. That's ball four. Duncan Mount here in the third is on. Knox White reached, stole the base. A visit and a conversation. Let's see if Cameron Banks keeps grinding out there. Her other arms and Banks was playing third. He then moved in. Looks like we'll get a a fresh look, a fresh arm, make a change after the leadoff walk. It looks like it may be Blaine Watson, number 21 in that jersey. Anyway, Blaine Watson was playing left field. We'll pause for just a moment. We'll step aside. Watson gets hot. 3-1 to the score. Tennessee on top. Time to get to work and see if he can lock things down. The son of Blaine and Jessica. His dad played college football. He also played baseball as well at the University of San Diego. Mom went to Cal State Dominguez Hills. This is, a, this is a young athlete with a pretty good history as a pitcher. It's a good chance for Watson. As a matter of fact, in his 14 perfect game innings, he has struck out 21 to this point. And all that work on the mound last couple of years. Pretty pitch just off the plate outside. Knox White. Knox the third baseman. Knox also a really good catcher. Thinking about the base runner who was on the move. He swiped it anyway. Duncan Mount with that really good speed after the walk has a stolen base. They pitched out on him, too. Armando Maceo has already thrown out a runner trying to steal. Has done really admirable, an admirable job behind the plate. Ground ball right side. Played on a backhand. Sets and fires. Blake Thornton in time for the up. Flips it over to Papa. 4-3 on the ground out. One away. At the 12U age group, Carolina has advanced to the championship. Don't forget, hang with us. We'll have that one for you. 
Carolina defeated Pacific Northwest. They came from a big deficit in their earlier game in the quarterfinals, so they're hot. They got that momentum. Brant, the pitcher, with the bat in his hands, walked and was thrown out trying to steal back in the first inning. Watson with that 21 and a good looking jersey dots the outside corner. We're talking about how heavily decorated Brandt was winning those five championships. One of those with Blueprint Baseball, the other four with Chattanooga Premier. Popped up, right side. Drops in there. Slips right on by, aggressive base running. Come on down and score easily. Contact rewarded for it. And look, you think about Brandt. Not once did he hang his head. He just ran as hard as he could for as long as he could. Not a well-struck baseball. It just landed in front of Will Height and Bowman. He popped that one up to the right side. They may have been playing deep. I just think it sunk quicker than they thought. Then it skipped away. Off the turf. Great reaction upon stomping on home plate there. Couple of whirling dervishes from Duncan Mound. Here's Brady Lawrence. To the right side. Nice play again. It's a couple of putaways out there on the base pads by Blake Thornton, the second baseman. A pair of four or three ground outs that he has handled. They tied him up nicely. Good life on that pitch for sure. Sebastian Cartaya came on and is running the bases, by the way, for the pitcher, Brandt. So Cartaya runs out there. Kellen Steele fly to center field as he takes a strike. Another good pitch. That one, one hop back to the mound. Underhanded flip over to Baca. And a nice play made by Watson. He was rewarded for a pitch right in on the hands. Nice clean inning. Let's see if it presents an opportunity for Southern California to chip away. Four to one, the score. He gets ready to go to work. You've got a feeling that the opportunity will present itself. You just got that feeling. Zach Casillas will lead things off. Corona, California native. Closes up that stance. A double pump on the leg kick as he takes high. Pretty pitch over the outside corner. James Brandt going back to work. Big swing, tumbles down. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that one. Take a swing like that. Lose your footing. Thumbs up. I'm all right. Let's do it again. Watch this. Yes! No. I love that. Not about to get cheated as he takes high. Brand on the mound, the son of George and Heather. Working against Zach Casillas. Zach attack is from Corona, California. Swing and a miss. 
An aggressive hack that time. He comes up empty. One, two, three, four, five strikeouts. Here with one out in the third inning. Fastball. 60 miles an hour. Elicits a swing and a miss. The talented catcher Armando goes to work. And he takes strike one over the inside corner. Maceal a strikeout victim back in the first inning. Not only can he catch, he can play middle infield. He's played in the outfield. He can hop up on the mound if you need him. It's a high pop-up. Foul territory right side. Nice job. Chase Conrad right up against that gate in foul territory. Looking into the night sky. Great lights here, though, so it never disappears. And a couple of quick outs. Strikeout and a pop-out to the first baseman. Thumbs up to that play. Nice job right behind it, making the call. Chris Humphreys got over in perfect position. Thornton late on that one, fouling it off. Let's go, Blake, they cheer. That is Tim. at that one helmet high right back to the screen it goes like just under two dozen PG events and in 91 games played at PG events as a 564 career on base percentage 96 hits it's just below the strike zone and a good take Seventy five stolen bases in those 91 games and a whole bunch of doubles 35 of them Right back to the screen it goes I'm gonna watch the progression of athletes this young taking on travel ball and throwing their metrics up there this this hitter is a great example that he has gone 13 miles an hour up in Velo at PG events as a pitcher. First ever PG event in which he played. He hopped up on the mound. It was in April of 2022. He threw 51 that day. A year later, and about four more months later, in August, threw 64 miles an hour. Getting bigger, stronger, growing harder. As he's a hitter now, and he takes low. James Brant impressive. One run allowed. It was a ball with the bases loaded. Last inning. Like last year, played in this 9U event at the All-State Select Championships. Where he has racked up a ton of all tournament awards. The Armory, No Fear Ballers, TC Titans, MVP Hustle. And he's a man on. And Thornton, who struck out, was excited for that next opportunity. He gets it, and he draws a walk. Parker Maxwell's in right field, by the way. 18 on that jersey when Parker hits will remind you of his exploits. Runner on the move, throw down, played on a hop that skips away. Trying to get one back. Got two outs in the inning. Boy, that's a great choice to steal a bag. Hudson Bowman. Crippled last time up. Comes up empty with that swing. Triple tried to score on a wild pitch. Brady Lawrence played it nicely. Looked like for a moment it ricocheted off the wall. Actually, he just kept it close as it skittered behind him just a couple of feet. Pulled himself together. And as Bowman streaked home, he popped the tag down. A good heads-up play by the catcher, Brady Lawrence. That's where we stand. Four to one the score. Would have been a big extra run for sure. Yeah. 
Hudson out of Poway, California. A step bat on his shoulders. It's on hard left side. Down the line it goes. That will play to California run. Hudson Bowman with a two out RBI gets it done. A swing toward third in there with the triple. How about Hudson Bowman? A chance to play on this large stage in a national event and a pair of triples in the championship game. And it's four to two. San Diego Hawks elite his travel team. Bowman, who has been decorated, played at this event last year. Eight times he's been an all-tournament team member for the for the Stars or for the Hawks. Both San Diego teams. He's got a an MVP twice. He won two MVPs in 2022 and a couple of championships for the San Diego Hawks. All right, Sebastian, your turn. Perez scored on that balk. He slashes that one to the right side. A couple of hops to the bag in time for the out, but not before. Hudson Bowman makes things interesting. A pair of triples on this contest. James Brandt, though, on top. He and his Tennessee mates still lead it by a score of 4-2 to two as we move to the fourth. Tennessee is in desperate need of adding on. So they'll look to William Goodrich to get things going first. Blaine Watson on the mound. His job pretty simple. Just keep it exactly where it is. Watson, the right-hander out of Carson, California. Some pretty good stuff. As that one dives down and away. Goodrich walked, stole a bag, was stranded back in the second inning. Oh, Willie Goodrich, as he takes outside. Goodrich threw two and two-thirds innings against the Southern California team a couple of days ago. And that one is high. And that's ball four, so he's done that well. Now this is five walks for this talented athlete in this event. Hello on base percentage. It's up over 600 because of that. Ryan McCallum's turn now. McCallum, he also walked back in the second inning. McCallum takes a strike. Aaron Sutton, glad to have you hanging out with us. Steve Banton leading our production team in the truck. Got him hung out. Let's see if they can execute. Now he hustled back. I think getting rid of the ball a little bit too quickly was Baca. Firing it down to the middle of the infield. And all of a sudden it opened up a door. A door wide open for William Goodrich to head on back to the bag. Beautiful throw, but an even better jump and a stolen base. Goodrich, a pair of walks and a pair of stolen bases. Watch the jump. Oh, he was out there at the cutout. He had a huge lead. Outside side of that sliding away from the tag. Pretty slide there. That was a great angle that showed a good jump and a pretty base stealer slide. Deep side, outfield side of that bag, obviously. A full set of signs. Look at Thornton stepping in with a full set of signs. RBI chance for Ryan. Fouls that one off. So McCallum has also pitched four and two-thirds at this event. Struck out six in those four and two-thirds. Along with that... He came in with four hits and a walk. That's an on base of 500. Has another walk here, so he's got four hits and two walks at this event. All tournament team member at the recent 10U Nash Vegas Fall Super Regional NIT. Oh, 
confidence, Deuce. He had a lead again at second. Just missed the inside corner. Good pitch from Watson. Looks like he's meant to pitch out there on the mound, doesn't he? That's in the right hander. Through two innings, scoreless, hitless, actually. With a little pickoff, though. Nice job communicating. As you can see, Thornton flashed the glove. Try to sneak in there, get his attention. You think about a play like that when you're on a select team like this with athletes that you don't play with regularly. To pull off a solid pickoff, that's impressive. That was low and inside. And it would have finished the thought against Great Lakes in a win. Watson threw two hitless innings, struck out four. Well, he's already been there when they needed it. On base of 600 in this event coming in as that one's outside. Took a tumble on the mound that time. So both Goodrich and McCallum replicate exactly what they did back in the second inning. A walk, each of them, and both are on. Hey, by the way, McCallum also stole a that jersey a little fist bump to his first baseman Watson who by the way the man on the mound moves to first base in a quick conversation with his catcher Armando and now waiting for this opportunity is Parker Maxwell he is from Knoxville Tennessee two months past his 10th birthday good chance he came in to play right field Maxwell in this event, one of three as a hitter overall, but a couple of walks, so he's already been on three times in the three games in which he has played. A couple of runners out there for Maxwell, and Maxwell drops down a bunt. How about that coming cold off the bench? A little slide at first. He's out at first. Took a spikes first slide there at the bag. They'll reset that bag. How about a tip of the cap to, to Maxwell? You're watching, you're watching, you're hoping you can get out there and get things done. You know what, we're gonna ask you to bunt, and he delivered a beauty. That is amazing. The entire Arizona Diamondbacks roster, the National League champions will be proud. We saw them bunt so much in the postseason, didn't we? As they did all year long. Not everyone watched them all year long. Here's Chase Conrad. Chase struck out looking back in the second inning. A lot of high fives in that dugout, and deservedly so for Parker Maxwell. In on the hand, popped it up. Look at Parker's work is taken care of. A run is plated. Contact for Conrad. And a big add-on run. It is 5-2. Chase Conrad with a single and an RBI. Left-hander pitch right in on his knuckles. Watch this right in. Boom, pulled the hands in. Over the shortstop's head in front of the center fielder, Bowman. That's got to feel good, especially for the last hitter in the lineup, the 11-hole hitter. He's got to pick off in motion, and it doesn't matter. He's swiped the bag. So Conrad feeling himself just a little bit. Runners on second and third now. Stolen base. The roller toward the mound, bobble, throw home, the tag, got in time.
Callum comes on down to score and a swinging bunt and an RBI for Jackson Spray. He had walked a couple of times. Didn't hit that one too far, but you know what? He hit it far enough. The bobble, that was costly. Baca just couldn't pick it up immediately. Flipped it home as quickly as he could. Hands in the air. Goes down against that one. That one's fought off. That's a base hit. Timely hit after a hit after a hit. And a slide and another add-on run. It's six to two. They're doing the Freddy there. You see that? That's a kid from Tennessee doing the Freddy. Even though it's against the team from Southern Cal. So Duke with a single and an RBI. And it's seven to two now. Runners on first and second, three runs in. The Freddie, right? Do you folks know what I'm talking about? If you ever watch Dodgers games, that was a big part of their celebration, the awkward Freddie Freeman dance that they all celebrated. Almost looks like if you watch your favorite mattress store or your favorite local car dealer with the inflatable, uh, almost alien looking arms extended and then it inflates up and those arms flail. That's what that dance looked like. And I thought it was a well done Freddy. 7-2 the score, fourth inning. That one with a double steal high and inside. They swiped it. How about a chance to come home? With the tag, in time for the out. Trying to be really, really aggressive that time. And it was executed. These are elite players. You tricked me once, maybe, but then again, a beautiful throw. How about that throw from Garcia as he recovered? Boom to Maceo. And you know the way he has caught this entire game, he turned that one into an out. It's a little 2 6 2. Mount fouls that one out. Two outs in the inning. Duncan singled, scored a run, drove it a run. Also walked and stole a base. Big breaking ball. Good spin to that one. Runner heads to third, throw down, he swiped it. So Duke goes to third base with a stolen base. And by the way, after further review on that out just a moment ago, Spray was called safe. So the steal of home did come into play, and eight to two is the score. Bouncing ball, left side, gobbled up out there on a cross, and in time for the out. A big inning though. Taking advantage out there on the base pads, aggressive, four run score, eight to two. The team from Tennessee on top. It's at Daly Park in Fort Bend County. Nearly 100 acres of just pure baseball bliss and with functionality, softball bliss when needed. Cameron Banks. All right, time to chip away and come back. They scored a couple of runs, one in the first, or I should say one in the second, one in the third. And you've got to be thinking, let's do it again.
Banks walked was stranded back in the second inning. And the count evens up at one and one. All the while, the one steady in this game with a lot of changes moving around has been this man on the mound. James Brandt has come on and just been steady as can be. Doing a lot of that, strike throwing. He struck out the first two batters of this game. Had a pair of strikeouts in the second, a single strikeout in the third. All right, his catcher tells him, Lawrence, I want it high. And he got it high. A little big league emulation there. Now, Lawrence is paying attention. It's just a sign of a good catcher because there has been a lot of commitment to pitches up there, up in the zone. Outside corner, that's strike three. A backwards K in the books. Six strikeouts now. And this is the championship game. You could see Lawrence was set up a little bit inside, but didn't move a ton with his body and framed that pitch up nicely. Good long visit and a conversation. We'll see if they make a, a change here. Yeah, managing his arm, pitches, pitch smart, he is done. Teammates certainly cheer him. Families, loved ones, coaches certainly cheer him. James Brandt, may I say, for all of us, it was a pleasure to watch you work in this championship game. That's great. We'll step aside. We'll reset the situation. When we come back, the 10U National All-State Select Championship game he can help his team how deep he can pitch. This is a shortstop by trade. But like a lot of athletes at this, the 10U age group, really talented athlete. And you can bet that you're starting to think, if you can shorten this game at all, I mean, obviously a six-inning game, but Partai is thinking something simple. If I can get a couple of quick outs, if my team can chip away and score two more, there is a run rule, and it's eight after four. Again, that's tough to do against this California team. Certainly, that's exactly what Partaya is thinking. James Brandt will stay in as the DH in the lineup, by the way. So, Sebastian. Far from his 10th birthday, faces Brandon Garcia, who's single. The shortstop. And Garcia takes a pitch over the outside corner for a strike. Partaya, a right-handed pitcher, right-handed defender, and a left-handed hitter. As a hitter, he's got a couple of walks in this event. This is the first time Cartaya has worked on the mound as he spins that one off the plate and outside. From Collierville in Tennessee. Francisco Antonio Cartaya, his dad, played professional baseball. And is now a scout. Sebastian plays for the big league Wildcats. His mom, Yanisel Partai. A little bit after New Year's, he'll be 10. We'll celebrate that birthday on January the 7th. We'll select. Great hats are good looking. Everything sharp about this event. But that little life, a little two seam dive. Thank you very much over the inside corner. The look of a two seam dive. Guessing just grips the baseball comfortably, but it's got good life to it. It's seven total strikeouts for this staff against the SoCal team. Will Hyde homered in the semifinals, a chance for him to swing it again. He takes right down the middle for a strike. Jamison from Livermore, California. Just 10U, but stands 5'4 and 125 pounds. He lashes that one toward right field. That's down. That will head all the way to the wall. Wheels spinning into second with the double. Will Height continues. It's been a great event with two bags. Watch his pitch. It's up. He liked it, but he didn't overswing. Nice level. It's one thing to want to pitch up there, 
but to get your hands up and have a level swing at that pitch up in the zone, that's another thing. So strong already, big leverage for someone so young. They're gonna miss, strike one. And Watson, who helped out so much on the mound, gets his chance to hit. We talk about what Will Hyde has done in this event. That's his eighth hit. He's got three walks as well. Popped up, fouled back. Hey, by the way, we've got a title game that's all set. It's the team from Carolina and the team from South Texas. They advance. That will be your championship game at the 12 UH group. In about a half hour after the last out of this one, we'll have that one for you. Bouncing ball out towards short. Cut across by the third baseman, Knox White. He fields, he fires, and in time for the out. Nice job by Cartaya. There was the double, but that double was stranded. We move along to the fifth inning. This is the 10U title game at the National All-State Select Championship with Tennessee up six. Celebrate baseball days after the Major League World Series ended. We're doing it in Texas, the home state of the world champions, although we're outside of Houston, not Arlington. We're celebrating this great event at the Diamonds at Daly Park, Fort Bend County. Beautiful Rosenberg, Texas. The team from Tennessee on top by a score of 8-2, to two, the left-hander Adam Baca continues to work. James Brandt, who pitched oh so well in this one, still with a bat in his hand, takes high. And we're about 45 minutes without traffic from the home of the Houston Astros. Seems to be playing postseason baseball every single year. That one dives low. We've enjoyed, though, we've really enjoyed Rosenberg. If you're ever coming this way and you need to, and you're bringing your team to a PG event at this complex. Pretty pitch over the outside corner. There's all of the, the good chains that you might like. There's a Cracker Barrel nearby, but there's some really authentic local spots. The old Railroad Cafe, a building that was open in the early 1900s, is an amazing spot. The Burger Barn, same thing. Local, local folks, local food. Those are a couple that we've enjoyed. And then a simple but fun place, Larry's Original Mexican Restaurant. All those are on... Highway 90, right by this great complex. But if you want your comfortable, larger, national chains, they're all nearby, too. It's just a great, great complex. Let's see if they can turn this into an out on a pickoff. Get rid of it quickly. Everyone getting involved, chasing, popping the tag right on the backside. And so Brant is erased. Nice job by Baca hanging that leg out. Brandt trying to grab as much extra as he could after the walk, and that's got to feel good. Nice execution. Again, these players don't play together, and I always mention that and you look at, a, at an All-American Classic, a select festival game, or a tournament like this, when it's an all-star tournament. It just shows you the skill set, though, as they communicate in the outfield, as catchers deal with different pitchers. A pitch up, well struck, right side. Hangs up into right field and into the glove. A big Jamison White, it goes to right fielder. Well, you like this certainly for the SoCal team. A couple of quick outs with the run rule looming of, of eight after four. You want to keep this team from adding on and get, get your six outs to play with. You've, you've played this deep, you've played this long, you've played all weekend at this great gathering of the best players in the country representing their home states and regions. Pretty pitch over the outside corner, and it's a strike. Kellen Steele. Fly to center field and grounded back to the mound. Steele chases up and away. Couple of quick outs in the inning. Baca will get a chance to hit next inning for his California squad. Maybe that's why he's hurrying back into that dugout. He wants to hit. Rolled out toward third. Not an easy play. Watson fields, fires, no chance. Little topper up that third baseline for Kellen Steele. And you knew when he hit it, 
that he had every chance in the world to reach. Yeah, just leaked out front, got out on the area over that knee. Every effort was made by Blaine Watson and Baca trying to steal himself another out. Willie Goodrich has had a good day. He's walked a couple of times. He's stolen a couple of bags. One up in the air. Down to a knee, and the play is made. A pitch high up at those cap bills. Goodrich offered at it. And Sebastian Perez, who started this game on the mound, comes up with a nice play on a dying pop-up right by the pitcher's mound. Tennessee comes up empty. That ensures that SoCal will have six outs to play with. They trail it in the 10U National All-State Select Championship game, 8-2. From Switzerland to Texas, carries the namesake of this city about a city like this one in the Houston area and the Galveston area, not too far from either spot. And you think about the railroad history. And he was a very influential man in the, in the railroad industry, and because of that, the Rosenberg name stuck. Mr. Henry Von Rosenberg, once he passed, that was the name of this community as it grows. And a proud history. Hence, as I told you earlier, the old Railroad Cafe. Here's Adam Baca. Somebody's studying, right? I mean, it's that time of year. Somebody's got to be out there studying. May as well throw some, some history out there for you as we watch 10 new players play. They were born in 2013 and 2014, he says with a smile on his face. 8-2 to two the score. Cartaya was pretty nice when he came in with a, a lot of peace after the outstanding evening from James Brandt. Picked up a strikeout, gave up a double to, and a ground out. He sails that one high. He can zone one up here. He does. Three and one to count. A Mesquita will get a chance to play in this game, too. Number 13 for that SoCal team. And that one is rolled into left field for a base hit. Kind of feel good. Baca's just done everything he can to help this team. Pitched on the mound. He's walked. He's singled. Hang with us, by the way. Somewhere about a half hour after the last out of this one, we're bringing you the championship game at the 12U age group as well. Carolina and South Texas. Players in Carolina from South and North Carolina. Even a player from Ohio that joined that roster. And that Texas roster joined by all Texans. We'll have it for you. Well, we told you he'd get an opportunity to swing it. And we're excited. We always love when... The roster opens up. This is Benny. Benny Amesquita from Norwalk, California. Nathan Bertram, I believe, will get a chance to hit as well, wearing number 42. Good chance for Benny, though. He takes the strike that hits the outside corner. His coaches say, simply put, this catcher, this outfielder, has a natural, beautiful left-handed swing. So we watch that swing as he lifts that one foul. Benny, pregame, come on now. <laughs> it's 
Smiles, energy, cartwheels. I love it. Life's too short to not love being at the yard. Catcher, as we said, can play on the corner of the infield. He'll hop on the mound, Benny, if you need him there. Bertram gets a chance as well as he waits in the on-deck circle. See him back there, back of the shot from our third base camera peeking in. That one skips by. That will allow the runner to move up. Head into scoring position. And Watson moves there. Watson's out there running for Baca. Only the last out of the fifth inning, so they let Baca rest it up. Benny, a couple of months shy of his 10th birthday. They're going to miss. Comes up empty. Good to see him out there. Had an opportunity to play. Already had four hits in this one and three walks. So Benny, an on base of over 430. This time he comes up empty, but congratulations on a great tournament. 438 on base coming in. All right, Nathan Bertram now. Right-handed bat, 42 on that jersey. And Nathan, out of Lakeside, California, takes strike one. Couple of hits in this event in 12 at bats. Couple of walks as well. As he takes outside, does Nathan. Primarily a pitcher, but also plays corner infield. Will catch. Scartaya takes a walk. It's the call over the outside corner. Good enough for Steve Walker as the umpire. Bertram four months past his 10th birthday. He's been an active PG athlete. We've seen him at a dozen and a half events. He's played in 53 perfect game games as he's tied up that time. Rolls it over to the right side. And it moves over to third. And by the way, in those 53 games prior to this event, a 496 on base. A pair of home runs as well. You see him out there getting a chance now. So Bertram rolls out. A chance to play in this championship game. Couple of hits, couple of walks already in this event. Bouncing ball to the right side. Hustling up the line, they fire and get Macy in time for the out. Does William Goodrich. 4-3 on the ground down. Southern California, one more shot at it in the sixth inning. But for now, we move to that sixth. 8-2 to Tennessee. Counting down the outs. Rocky top on top. They're celebrating the state of Tennessee. If you're a fan of this great squad and you've enjoyed this event as a family member, as a coach, as an athlete, if you're a 10 U player that happens to be just out there watching on your smart television. Hey, by the way, if you haven't already downloaded the Perfect Game TV app, you've got to do it immediately. Immediately. You can grab it on any smart device, including that beautiful TV in your family room, in your bedroom, wherever you may have it on your Obviously on any of your tablets, on your phone, make sure and just do it everywhere. The app, brand new app. Go to the app store, whether it's on your television or on your smart device, whatever it may be, and download the brand new Perfect Game TV app. Got to do it. McCallum rolls it out to the right side. Thornton makes the play, the second baseman. Made a couple of nice plays back in the third inning. Blake has had a nice evening out there as the second baseman. You betcha. Looking for another one. Parker Maxwell. We saw Parker. He gets a swing away this time. He dropped down a beautiful sack bunt. Yeah, he swings away, rolls it foul. 
Well, we talked about it. Maxwell waited and waited in this game and got called upon last inning. A couple of runners out in front of him. They walked, and Maxwell dropped down a gorgeous bunt. Both runners that were advanced on the pretty sacrifice came around to score. Maxwell this time pops it foul. No balls and two strikes to count. Parker from Knoxville. Parker swings through that one. He had a great bunt last time. Glad he got to swing away. On this Tara Maxwell, she played softball, went to Tennessee Westland. Dad played baseball as well. Knoxville Stars, his travel team. A couple of outs, Chase Conrad drove in a run. Conrad takes high. The Southern California team will have a chance at a miracle in the next half. Down off the end of the bat. Popped up. Over the shoulder grab. What a play out there. Wow. Hello, Brandon Garcia. You pay to watch plays like that, certainly, and Garcia just in front of Cameron Banks, who have moved to left. Down off the end of the bat here. Watch Garcia. One, two, leap, and he got it. What a grab to the bottom half of inning number six we go. State of your region. 71 teams this weekend vying for the title in that age division. 10, 12, 14U. Coming up next, about a half hour after the final out of this one, South Texas against Carolina in the championship game. Now, those pool games are important. Short span of time, teams are guaranteed four pool play games, and they break into single elimination bracket. Every pool play game is really important. Not only making the playoffs, making the gold bracket, obviously, everyone moves into a separate bracket, but the seeding. First round bye when you move into that championship as well. It's really, really great. Next weekend, by the way, the 9, the 11, and the 13U championship. 63 total states and regions represented at those three different age groups. Last chance for the athletes out of Southern California. And this Southern Californian born and raised who's calling this one. Cheering for the guys to go out with a fight. Really proud of what Tennessee has done in this game. Little bend in that one as it hits the outside corner from Cartaya to Thornton. Blake struck out, and he's also walked and scored a run. Hits that one hard to the right side, but to his counterpart. And William Goodrich makes the play for the first out of the inning. Great energy, great facility. 94 acres have served perfect game in this event well and will again next weekend. Hudson Bowman, he takes high. What a day for the Bowman. A pair of triples. Easy, a pair of triples. Bowman, big swing, fouls that one back. I'd swing like that too if I had two triples. John McAdams, what a great job he does leading the scouting and the development of this age group, keeping an eye on these players, the communication of all these youth athletes, their families and coaches. Tony Harper along with John doing such a wonderful job at building. With a game in the youth space has so much to be proud of. One thing we see at these events, especially when it Ticks on down to the nine and the ten U age group is the fun. The fun is not lost in these events. I mean, it looks fun even at the highest levels, right? But you want to make sure that these athletes, you hold on to them. The baseball holds on to them. Because if you're talented enough to play in an event like this, and your baseball skills are that sharp at ten U, you can pick your sport. So the fun's a big part of it. Right back to the mound, gets by Cartaya. Diving attempt there. 
And he couldn't come up with a Jackson spray, though. Laid out, nearly knocked it down. Even if he gloves it cleanly, I don't think he has a play. So Mr. Bowman, a three for three day in the championship game. Well, his team might not win it, but what a great game he has had. Perez takes strike one over the outside corner from Cartaya. Again, hang with us. We'll have the 12U championship game right here on Perfect Game TV. Give or take a half hour after the last out is recorded. Over the outside corner. Couple of strikes up there on the board. Making good use of that 55 mile an hour fastball. You know what hitters say when they can't hit 55 strong, right? They say, hey, coach, I can't drive 55. Pop foul. They couldn't drive that one. Eight to two, the score. I'll be here all week, by the way. Thirteen hits combined for these two teams. A pair of miscues each. That one hits the outside corner. That's strike three, one out away. Cameron Banks has done a lot of good things today. Hopped up on the mound, he reached on a walk. Banks gets a chance to extend the SoCal run. He takes a pitch up and away. Does Mr. Banks. Cameron lines that one towards center field. That's well struck, and that'll do it. That's a title for the talented athletes from Tennessee. Oh, Rocky Top wins it. The final score, 8-2. to two. The 10U National All-State Select Championship goes to Tennessee. And another amazing year to celebrate these great athletes to celebrate the growth of our sport and more than anything the work of these families the sacrifice of these coaches and families and athletes all that goes into it but as we head into the holiday season really thrilled for these athletes as they get to take a bit of a break maybe take some downtime but do so after playing in this amazing all-state select championship which continues to grow we'll have the 12u game for you Coming up here in about a half hour, we congratulate certainly Tennessee, we congratulate SoCal, but again, there were 20 states and regions represented. And they all made themselves very, very proud. All sorts of fun in this one, and we celebrate, as we mentioned, the work of James Brandt on the mound for Tennessee. The work of Hudson Bowman with a bat in his hands for SoCal. There were big hits along the way from names like Weston Duke and Duncan Mount and Chase Conrad. And even Parker Maxwell hopped up on the bench and played some little ball. Jackson Spray was great. And so was Weston Duke. Brandon Garcia, Cameron Banks, and Hudson Bowman all reached multiple times. So on behalf of our production team, we'll be back with the 12U title game in a 